Carl, I'm Justin Moss. I've been working for Florida Grand Opera for 30 years. I retired a couple of years ago, but I'm leaving my hat in the ring to try and help as much as I possibly can. And my commitment to the company was redoubled by seeing this performance of Pagliacci. I have seen so many Pagliacci's during my life of 76 years now that I can't even begin to count them, but this was such a special experience for me, I think for many reasons. I think the stage director, Jeffrey Buckman, did a fabulous job of realizing the potential for a lot of things to make this a really full and eventful evening. And I think the thing that most affected me was the deep and total commitment of the artist singing the, the lead roles. I was overwhelmed. This tenor has so much voice and an equal amount and level of commitment that it created just like one of those, one of those experiences you always hope you're gonna have when you go to the opera and you don't as often as you wish and you sure had it with this production of Pagliacci. How, how did this affect you when you saw these artists and, and this production? Uh, it's, it's like watching history. Um, the magnification of just not only voices, right. in terms of physical voices, and, and how you amplify without no, not any mics. Right. And to be currently present, but to be present in history. Mm -hmm. This is historic. Yeah. Not just because you have two people of color that are engaged in a classic opera. You know, I consider Pagliacci the opera for the masses. It's a real classic opera. Mm -hmm. It's one of the three or four best first operas for people to see to really of course, connect to get into with the it. Form. And 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 to see this opera to be in its full color. Yeah. In its full abundance. Right. During Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it, 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 resonate, it resonated to me more because I knew that FGO was dedicated to diversity and equity. And we are, and always have been, but you know it's been a hard slog. I can remember 25 years ago we had a young black tenor in our young artist's studio, and he had a lot of promise. And this was a guy that I thought, that's a really uncommonly gorgeous voice but I could just feel this sort of dead hand that he was feeling every day of his life that he was saying, well, nice voice, but you're not gonna get any work. You're not gonna be hired for the leading kinds of roles that you really should be doing. And I hope you're up for a lot of disappointment in trying to fight that battle and get right. over the hump. And he, you know, sort of lost heart and, and kicked back for a while, but then, outside of the company, he went forward and is now singing the biggest tenor roles in the world, like Verdi's Othello, mm -hmm. at the Met, at La Scala, the best houses in the world, and he was finally able to do it. And I was so proud of him, because I used to just see him and think, man, I sure hope you can find work, because right. you need to be heard. You're an artist equal to or greater than the quality you almost ever hear and it's been an uphill battle for artists of color to find work, to be accepted, and to find a group of producers, people responsible for putting together productions of opera, who are willing to see them in these roles and, and really make it work. I, I was just so proud of the company because I watched the performance and, and I thought, you know what? You're just not gonna hear singing this good except on really rare occasions and I'm so proud of these people, and mm -hmm. I'm so proud of the company for hiring them and giving them a chance because the whole totality of the experience of the production was, was just one of the most intense, gratifying experiences in the Opera House I've had in my whole 76 years. Just look at the cast, the diversity in cast. Right. You look, and also, it, we have to give credit to the director, and not only to the director of the opera itself, but to the musical director. Yeah. Understanding the power that he has yeah. in, 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 in conducting a, a piece that's been done all over the world. And to make this production, to make this performance so unique, 
because I saw myself on that stage. Good, good. That's what you should do. You know, it's a challenge when you're doing a show that's so popular, mm. that's so well-loved, and that most of your audience has probably seen at one point or another, because they're all coming into the theater with a whole suitcase, a bag full mm -hmm. of expectations of what they're mm -hmm. gonna hear, of what it's gonna look like, of how it's gonna be done. And you know, many, many times you have artists that don't have that, that theatrical gene that can really just exactly. burn that stage mm -hmm. and, and thrill you. You know, they stand and deliver, and if they sing really, really well, that's worth something. But an experience of the kind we're having with this production of Leon Cavallo's Pagliacci is rare and so valuable, and in many, many ways life-changing. I haven't been able to stop thinking about it and thinking about how well it really worked. Uh, Jeffrey Buckman, I've known for 30 mm -hmm. years, is a really good friend and an insanely gifted stage director. Mm -hmm. And the ability of, of thinking through how you'll get these kinds of performances out of artists of this caliber right. is just phenomenal and it's just really earth changing and life changing. I think Lemmy said it best. I was having a conversation with him and, and I asked Lemmy, do you think, do you think the opera genre, the opera world is ready for, for a performance like yourself? And his reply was, not paraphrase, okay, is if they're not ready, they better get ready. Good, good for him. Because we're here, we're not going anywhere. Well, I'm gonna make a point of seeking Lee out and telling him, I'm ready for you. I'm ready and too. I wish you every opportunity <laughs> and every break to let us hear as much as we can about you. What a voice. I, you know, don't speak ill of the dead ever, but I do wanna say, as I sat there last night, I thought, this guy has more voice than Pavarotti. Wow, that, that's his mentor, does. right? Yeah. I mean, that's and his. he does. He has more voice than Luciano, and Luciano had 20. Right. But this was one of the most thrilling, thrilling performances of big Verismo singing. And that's another thing that, that I, I love that um, people are coming to realize opera singers are standing there without any amplification. None. And when you have to be heard, not just heard, but <laughs> knock people socks off, right. you know, in a house that has 2,500 seats or something, it creates an experience you don't find any place else. You don't find it in any amplified rock concerts, in any movies. There's something physical about the force they have developed to make that much sound that you really have a physical sensation. Yeah. Pumps and, you know, yeah. They're the athletes. They really are athletes. They're athletes. athletes. They're, they're athletes, athletes and, and, and the, the ability to connect with them regardless of your seat number. Exactly. And the ability not only to connect with them and lose and get completely lost in the story that you see no size, no shape, or no color. Exactly. I was so engrossed, and I've seen this, as I said, so many times, more than I can count, and yet I was totally absorbed in the production every minute. I was also sorry to see it end, because yeah. I could have listened to a lot more of that scene. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you look at, you know, on the opening scene, you see Lemmy, he's a, he, he's, he's a sizable man. He is. Right, and, 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 but because of his performance, his voice overtakes his physical size. But you know, for me, I realized, as everyone in the house did, that he was a big man when right. he came out. But when you realize that the voice was even bigger, bigger. Right. and his commitment to making that role live on that stage, exactly. even greater yet, exactly. just overcame everything and, and became a part of the whole experience. And I was just mm -hmm. so for him. I just, he finished his aria, Vesti La Juba, tonight. Mm -hmm. I thought they were pulling the house down. Yelling, I, I agree. So people just loved it. And so he's selling it, it's working, and it's an experience of really such a high level. I think the Florida Grand Opera can be really, really proud. I hope people who are coming to the opera for the first time are really gonna wanna come back and have this experience again and again. And I think the people like me, who've watched people of color battle right. to get one foot on that stage, and the rare animals who broke those barriers, like Leontine Price and Grace Bombry and so forth, 
you know, it's a miracle, a miracle they were able to have the careers they're having. I think a lot of opportunities are out there today that didn't exist before, and this is an example of art at the highest level, people delivering performances that you will never forget. And, and Kirstein, too, and, and to her credit, I mean, they're, they're really physically clearing the stage. They are. To make room, to make room for, for, for performers of color, but not, not only, let's, let's, let's get beyond the, the, the overtones mm -hmm. of, of the weight of skin, skin color. Mm -hmm. Let's get beyond that. The ability for them to raise the art form beyond the level in which they engage with it initially exactly. and to raise it to a level that they have set a pretty high bar. Regardless who you are, where you're from. I'm seeing performances that I'm thinking, this is life changing for me. Oh. I've been watching on for all my life <laughs> and this tonight is life changing. I totally agree. And we have a second a second act to change our lives even further. Even further, Dan. Even further. Well, it's a pleasure and congratulations. Love the piece. You're oh, I've thank been you. looking at your photographs a long, long time. But I appreciate that. And I love them. And it's always a pleasure. I always look at the photo credits and look for your name. Well, thank you for um, Florida Grand Opera for having me, giving me the opportunity to, to bear witness to history, number one, but to bear witness to humanity on stage. Absolutely. And bravo. And if we're able to reach out to the heart of somebody as worldly and experienced as you, I think we're doing something. Oh, we need more people you. filling those seats. That feels exactly like us. Exactly. And it's coming. I'm all for it. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you.